come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We come at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. <laughs> Who are these internet radio superstars? Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And uh, hey, do us a favor, a little housekeeping, because we're not asking for your money. All we want is for you to run over to wherever you found us, be it on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever, hit the subscribe button or, you know, failing that or in addition to that, write us a review. Or if you can't do that, at least give us the thumbs up or the star rating. That's right. Because all of that stuff helps us become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the world. In the world. Oh, wow. wow. That's a, that's that's a, a claim. Big, that's a big statement. Well, I mean, you know, you got to have a, goals there's, and there's aspirations. There's a lot of movie podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big goal. I if <laughs> you build it, he will come. I'm going to make a bold statement and say that, like, podcasts in general is like 70% true crime and like 30% movies. And that's probably <laughs> yeah, the that's, whole industry. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're probably right about that. <laughs> might be that's right. That's where you got to find something else to, like, corner the market. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The knitting podcast. No? There's podcasts for everything. They're just not everything. nearly as everything. successful everything. as yeah. true crime or movie podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Those are the most successful ones. So we got a movie one. Do we need to do a true crime one? Just to like I cover, mean, cover I, all? I feel like most people at this table would. Yeah, so. yeah that's very true. Yeah, Very true. <laughs> well, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Alice Sweet Alice. Mm. You may also know it as Holy Terror or <laughs> Communion. Holy okay. Terror. I yeah. like the. I saw the Holy Terror trailer. <laughs> yeah, which I liked, which was very Brooke Shields heavy, considering what happens in this movie. That's right. Well, well, okay. So here's how this all came about. Okay. I was say, why do we have three different titles? Yeah. The movie was made as Communion. This is 1976. The movie okay. Was made. 76. Uh, Alfred Soleil, I believe, is the director. Yeah. So the movie comes out. Or it is made in 76 under the title Communion. He has a deal to distribute it with Columbia Pictures, right? And at the last minute, this deal falls through because some of the producer in Columbia, something gets fucked up. So I don't think it was ever released here in the States as communion. It may, it may have come up, came out in uh, the UK. Mm-hmm. So another company like Allied or something like that buys it. They retitle it Alice Sweet Alice. Dude hates the title. He's like, uh, you know, because the, they didn't want it to be thought of as like, it might be a Christian movie. Communion. Right? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it comes out, it does whatever it's going to do. It only plays for like a week or two. And then Brooke Shields, who's in this movie, this I believe was her first theatrical appearance when she was 12 years old. Maybe she was younger than that. Because she's pretty young. 1978, she was in a movie called Pretty Baby. Anyone ever heard of Pretty I've seen Baby? It. You've seen really? it? I've heard, I've heard of it. I have not. Okay, it's a it's really a small movie. It's all, yeah. it's what, all what, kinds, what, all kinds of know. fucked up. Yeah, that all sounds kinds bad. Of fucked up. Are we telling people what, what that's about? I mean, I feel like everyone know, has heard of that movie. Have they? Sean hasn't. So. Never, no? no. She's like a child prostitute in that movie. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's like turn of the century New Orleans. Who's Susan in charge Sarandon of their, their child? And I know. Them... Okay, so this well, this is the thing, right? Well, I mean, Yeah, ever... she's written a couple books about how fucked up her parents yeah. were. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Her mom like, pressed her into modeling in show business at a very early age. I mean, when I, when I was a kid, I know that Brooke Shields and her mom were always like in my household, like kind of talked about in hushed terms. Like, okay. this, you know, there's something wrong with, uh, you know, her mom. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, because there's nude scenes in Pretty Baby. Mm-hmm. Oh. She's 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What? Yeah. This guy, what else did Louis Mal do? He did... Um, my dinner with Andre. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and Vanya and Forty Second Street okay. <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so she became notorious. I think okay. at uh, you know at twelve years old in seventy eight. You, you never want to be notorious at twelve baby. years old. That's not good. Well, then another company buys the rights to the movie. They release it as Holy Terror, mm. and that's why if you watch the trailer for Holy Terror, yeah, it's all about Brooke Shields. Yes, it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. This is before you know she grew up to the Blue Lagoon. And then Endless Love right. was Endless right around Love, the same right. time. So she was like the naughty girl, you yeah. know, like kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I think she quit acting for a while, right? 
I think so. Well, she did like Playboy or something, and somewhere around there, then she quit for years. And I think went off and got a master's degree and pursued, you know, other interests, and then eventually came back to acting with uh, Suddenly Susan TV mm-hmm. show or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, now yeah. she's a personality, you know. Yeah, she was one of the first celebrities to ever speak out loud about postpartum depression. Yeah. She wrote a book about that, and that was, like, a big deal because, like, she was basically the first famous person to Mm -hmm. say that. And then famously, like, the whole Tom Cruise attacked her for for being a medication. Yeah. Don't be glib, Michaela. Yeah, that that was what started (laughs) that whole thing. That's her? That's what Yeah. 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 The glib thing is attacking her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I knew the glib thing. He basically told her, like, depression isn't a real thing, Uh, and so it can't be treated with medication, and, you know, we are all the brainwashed people, was, like, his argument. No, not the Scientology people. Not at all. But, yeah, she wrote a book and, like, was promoting her book, and he, like, attacked her for promoting her book. He brought himself into the conversation that had nothing to do with him. Yeah. Back when he was trying to be like, no, it was his couch should. jumping. It was his couch well, jumping. Yeah, yeah. he fired his publicist mm-hmm. at that. I remember at that time because the publicist was like, Tom, Tom, we should probably keep all this Scientology stuff. Like, you know, yeah. that makes you seem right. weird. Yeah, and yeah. We, we shouldn't do it. And he's like, no, it's a positive thing. And people should know about this. So he fired his publicist and hired like what? It was his sister in law or his sister or something became mm-hmm. his publicist. And then there was couch jumping and mm-hmm. Matt, your glib. Yeah. 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 The Matt, your glib was because yeah. he was asking him, why did you attack Brooke Shields? And then he was okay. like, don't be Matt, glib, Matt. Yeah. Don't, don't be glib. what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's all mm. coming together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it not all know comes that. back to, mm-hmm. yeah. to Brooke Shields, center okay. of the universe. Yeah. Brooke Shields is like, hey, just buy a lazy boy. <laughs> Does she ever model like jeans or something? It feels like probably. she was a Calvin yeah, Klein. Uh, yeah, or probably. Something. I think she was a yeah, guest um, jeans. Wait, was she, there's nothing between yeah, me was, and my that, Calvin Klein. That was her. Nothing okay. between me and oh, my Calvin. Right, yep, right, that was her. Yeah. Oh. All right, it's all coming back. Yep. Okay, <laughs> well, there it is. Um, I've still never seen the Blue Lagoon to this day. I've seen like really? parts of it on TV. So when I was when I was a kid, I watched Blue Lagoon and Return to the Blue Lagoon. Those were uh, like that's Mila Jovovich. Yeah, those were like my scandalous movies that I watched as oh. a kid. <laughs> How scandalous is the Blue Lagoon? Not that scandalous. No, oh, it's I was really say, not. I've seen. Uh, I, I saw because I'm pretty sure we ran on our channel and it looked pretty scandalous. I'm just like, oh shit! I what's, mean, what's no. Happening? In in comparison, like as a kid, yes, it's probably pretty scandalous. Yeah. But you it know, seemed pretty scandalous. Now I'm like, no, not really. Okay. Although I. Th- I think there is slight Brooke Shield nudity in that too. Well, that's what I thought. Like just a, very like, briefly, very right. briefly. And then she's young in that. She's yeah. very. She's like. It always felt like she's like was, sixteen. Yeah. In there that was movie. hair yeah. hanging yeah, yeah. for breath. Well, yeah. yeah, like yeah. that. Hair is constantly yes. covering, but at one point, I think she's swimming and it's not covering. Okay. I think was if yeah. I remember right, it's been a long time. Yeah, okay. no, because this seemed pretty scandalous. But, but yeah, she's like sixteen in that movie, so okay. it's it's still pretty scandalous. Well, so Brooke Shields is in this movie. Yeah. Briefly. Okay, so this is the thing. We are going to uh we're gonna spoil this movie. I think that's the only way to talk about that's, it. That's yeah, what we always sure. do. That's nothing new. That's, that's what right. We do. Okay, but in yeah. just in case this is your first rodeo, uh warning, warning. There's gonna be some spoilers. Okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, what we gotta get into, I guess, suppose in some way what this movie's about. Uh two of you had never seen this before. Correct. I have never seen Correct. this before now. Yeah. This is on the Bravo's scariest movies yeah. list. Yeah, it's it's like I wanna say middle of the pack as far as like scary movie moments. I wanna say it's like maybe sixties in the sixties somewhere. What's no, the do, I was gonna say, do you wanna get into which moment it was? Yeah, what's or the they, that that's the thing. The moment is not what I, the moment I think it it's should the be. moment in the steelworks. It's the very beginning of the movie. Really? Yeah. The choking. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, really? That's it. And I'm like, no. I think there's better moments later on. I don't. That wouldn't make my top 100. Huh. But, well, this yeah. is so on the Bravo top 100 is also the Sentinel, mm-hmm. which we watched a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. This movie has another that scene, thing. D- that in scene deserves common. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course. Honestly, this, that scene should be higher on that. That scene deserves it. Yeah. According to MF Mad, who is mm-hmm. the keeper? Of the Wall of Fame, Indeed, the Wall of Fame right. being this wall behind Holly. Uh, yes. you know, if you yes. turn around, you can see it with all the right photographs behind me. hung of all the people the who wall. have Stallone been wall. in yeah. movies that we have covered here on this show. Every time there's somebody who's been in a movie uh, three times, yes, uh, we put them on the wall. No of fame. matter what. So who's on the Wall of Fame from this movie? I'll tell you, uh, Gary Allen. You remember Gary? Gary played. The brother-in-law, the okay. bald brother-in-law. Okay, he okay. was in the Sentinel. Oh, you nice. Remember? Who was he? Black in the and Sentinel? white cat and the black and white cake. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I remember. Yeah. yeah. 
So he's at the party. Yeah. Okay, he's at the party. The yeah. very disturbing party. Uh, he was also, Sean, in one of your favorite movies. Wait, was it you brought Fright Night Part 2? I did. Uh, he's Mr. <laughs> Newberry. So Mr. Newberry does what in that movie? Isn't he like uh, the teacher? So I can't remember. Is he, is he like? Is he the, yeah. He's not the therapist. He's. I don't remember much about Fright Night too. Yeah, no. I remember, the, I remember, I remember yeah, there's a reason for that. Yeah. The skateboarding, dude, the bowling alley, or the roller, the roller skating, skating. the roller skating, and the I remember, bowling alley. Uh, what's his yeah. name? Um, I don't think he's getting one his of the, guts cut open and bugs crawling out. Yeah, he's not one of I the don't vampires. Remember that. No. Yeah, he's like one of the faculty or something. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Somebody at the college. All right. Well. Okay. That's, well done. That's cool. Again, doesn't matter how big your uh, role mm -hmm. is, three times and you're on that wall or the yeah. hallway. There you go. So maybe he's in the hallway. I think he's in the hallway. Yeah, Gary yeah. Allen. There Gary we go. Allen's we, in the hallway. Well done, Gary. Show. Well Bravo. done. Congratulations. A little candle is being lit on a cupcake somewhere for, for Gary <laughs> Allen. Um, <laughs> Let us know if you're lighting that candle. I'll tell you, the, the, the poster art on this thing has uh, followed me around all my life. I became aware of this movie when I was a kid because it, it was on uh, VHS, you know, like uh, Good Times Home Video or something mm -hmm. like that. Good Times it. Home Video. And I'm like, that's creepy looking. Yeah, this, creepy that looking. should be the three-faced baby. Uh, right on the, the cover, doll. but that's fine. Yeah, the, this doll is fine. We got a doll it's, that's been stabbed, and behind face. it there is there's a one bag. Face, there's one face. Oh, is it? Yeah. And in the bag oh, is yeah. you are correct. We the, just the, the other one's on the other side. Yes. Yeah. It is. I'm sorry, I but wasn't the, looking close enough. Mask, it is the three faced baby. But the mask isn't right. Yeah, because it's supposed to be a clear, right, yes. clear faced yeah. mask. You can find these everywhere in, around Halloween, maybe even before then. Clear face masks in grocery well, stores. Clear face, everywhere. but with like pink cheeks and the blue yeah, around the, the eyes. It, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not totally clear. Some it's, rouge. Yeah. So this is a movie that comes out before the slasher film uh, boom. It comes out before Halloween. Right. Mm -hmm. It's after Black Christmas. Would you consider this film to be a slasher film? No. We got one. No. Mm. But, uh, Holly is thinking. Not Sean is really. not there, sure. there is a large chunk on where it's not. Yeah. yeah. What kind of movie is there's a, What's the, like, I, the, I don't think there's an inciting incident in this movie. And we, we have cited that in the past as being yeah. one of the right. key elements of the slasher movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's, not, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no constant slasherness in this movie. Like, we get it for a good chunk in the beginning. And there's a middle that is um, very. A soap opera? Soap opera. The middle yes, is very soap opera. It is. And then we get to a little. Slasher at the end, and then so there is a body count, but it's yep. not uh, it's not at random necessarily. Once we find out what the killer's motive is, right? Uh, the murders are exceedingly gruesome for films of that time. I would say. I would say so. Yes. Yeah. I don't think Shocking. there's a lot of suspense with the no, no kills. There's not. Like, no. Really? No. no. I feel like it just she just kind of pops out of somewhere and then it's over. Oh, so know? it's more of the shock. I, I think so. I think so, yes. Yeah. I think we there's a lot more shock. Mm -hmm. It's effective. Because though. it's also, it's because it's, it's very fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very fast. And when we get to like the murders and how they actually happen, because at one point it's just like, oh, she's in a mask. Oh, she's killing someone. So it happens really quick. I've seen this twice before. Okay. And uh, tonight there was a scene that, that shocked me. I was like, oh, when she jumped over the railing and stabbed, yeah. uh, I think the, the dad. The I think, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. it was the it was either the dad or the aunt. Yeah, I was like, oh, I forgot about that. There doesn't seem to be like a sense of stalking in this movie like a lot of slasher films have, you mm -hmm. know? No, the, there's none of this, that build up. I feel like in this movie, it's like them pursuing the slasher. Yeah. It's you weird. know, which it's weird. Yeah. They're going to look for them and then they and then the slasher pops mm -hmm. out and kills them. It's it's a very odd reversal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is in the movie. Now, see, I okay, so. Again, I saw it a long, or I saw the box a long time ago. Sure. Haven't seen this movie did. until about a month ago. It was the first time oh, really? I saw it. Oh, really? I was going to say, a did month you? Ago? Yeah, about a month ago. Oh. Yeah. I, was I got say, Amazon I'm... Prime and it was on there and oh, so I wow. watched it and I was like, holy shit. So, wow. I was going to say, I'm looking at this box. Did you have to special order this? The Arrow. Uh, it's, but it's Arrow, Arrow video. Is it yeah. Arrow? It's yeah. Arrow video. So, it's, so very, yes. it's, it's taken care of. It's, uh, it's, this is a uh, really good print because the I watched the trailer for, like we said, um, Holy terror! Holy terror! And that looked horrible. Yeah, because I remember the scenes where um, the ant gets stabbed on the stairwell, and it looked very yellow and very yeah. just not good. So this yeah. is a very good print of this movie. Yeah, there's like a technical thing that's driving me nuts about this, but I don't know if I want to bring it up because it's like super nerd. 
Uh, be super nerd. Well, super yeah, this nerd. is this is the platform for that. Yeah. All right, <laughs> super nerd. Here you go. When you're doing your film restorations, did you guys notice the fades? Because this movie is one of those movies that incorporates fades to black. Mm-hmm. Scenes yep. fade out and they fade back up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anything strange about the way they look to you? You're like, no, it's fine. Didn't notice. Okay. Nope. When you take film right and you expose you get the negative right and then they want to do a dissolve or a fade to black yeah. and they have to put two pieces together and it's called an op- optical right yeah and so you actually have to print that uh that transition yes so that is it becomes one step removed from the negative okay yeah. okay when you're restoring a movie you're trying to go back to the negative and actually make the thing look really nice that's why usually when you see like title sequences in movies and transitions, They're, they always kind of the film quality changes a little bit. Definitely. Like, why does that look a little bit shittier no, than the does. shot right before it? It's because on that they had they're already they're one generation off of the negative. Mm-hmm. This restoration said, you know what, we're going to beat that. They went back to the negative and recreated it? the transitions ah. so they could have the best film quality nice. the whole way through. So those are electronic or the digital fades. Okay. It, like, because it doesn't look like a film no, fade. No, it doesn't it look like fucking the old drives film. Me crazy. It doesn't look yeah. like the old film transition <laughs> uh-huh. because you can you can see where the transition starts yeah. and it turns into a shittier version of the movie yeah. and then it transitions In a regular over. movie, but in not a regular in this movie, one. Yes. Yeah, in this yes. one it was like, ooh, nice That is always nice noticeable. Digital I want to watch old movies and you can <sighs> those transitions, you can definitely see them. Holly's going, I don't fucking care about this. I know. No, it is. It's it's a, no, it's, a, I think there, it's, no. it's not a hill to die on. No, you know? no it isn't. But there is, like, people out there will know what we're talking yeah. about. Like, the, I, I have I obviously noticed world. those transitions. That's right. This is yes. not the perfect I mean, version I know what you're talking of Alice, about. sweet Alice. I, yes. I, I get, Take it back. No, I get what you're saying. No. There was just other, like, editing choices that I... It bothered me more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Like I <laughs> yeah. was like, that, that's that's your biggest issue with this movie. This must be a perfect movie. And I was like, all right, well, good for you, man. <laughs> all right. So the plot of this film, we do have. So it's basically this is a movie that revolves heavily around Catholicism. It's the year 1961. We established, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, through from the various- calendar, from Kennedy. Thank hang- you, Kennedy. From and from the calendar, the Playboy hanging, hanging next to the nudie pictures in the detective's office. Right. Yeah. Jesus As you Christ. did. You know, back then, when I guess, had, apparently, when you had old JFK I mean, looking I, down, I on thought, it. you know, maybe in a locker at like yeah. a police station, but yeah. not like, like not on the up office next to your wall. police desk. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you have to have inspiration. Next to your training certificate. The, yeah. Like, why am what, I, if I wallowing this murder, in shit? They're gonna have all sex with me. This yeah. is what their motivation is. It's beauty. That's what, right. It's like you have to go see shit every day, but at least there's. You I need something. I'm you need something to bring you back. That doesn't mean everyone else needs to see it. Yeah. I mean, it was literally just a standard detective bureau office. What if like. You know, the head witness, dude comes witness, in. Yeah. Uh, what, no, what if witnesses come into your office to like talk to you about shit? You're just gonna have nudie pictures there. I assume they don't the let fuck? like the witnesses come in. The dude is because he's like, well, he's another dude, and he will be fine. You don't think people? You <laughs> they don't got think, rooms. For you that. don't think civilians come into his office ever? Mm. We don't know. Honestly, don't know. if I if I am working anywhere and I go into someone's office and that is on the walls of their office, I'm, I'm talking out. to my boss and saying well, I'm quitting. Yes, yeah, that's, quitting. A, that's a problem. Yeah, like, well, that's, that's a yeah. problem. Yes, yeah. but not 1961. Now that is a problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, well this was yeah. all right in that year. Right. This it's was, but out, again, man. this was filmed in the year 1976. But again, yeah. but not the least fucked, or but not the most fucked up thing in this movie. So, yeah. well, Alice, or sorry, uh, Karen. That's Brooke Shields. Karen. Yeah. Right. She yeah. lives in a broken home, I would say, right? The mother uh, and two daughters. Yep. Uh, Linda Miller is the mother. Linda mm-hmm. Miller was married to Jason Miller. You know him from The Exorcist. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Father of, so that's, uh, their son is Jason Patrick. Oh, Jason oh, Patrick. Oh, really? I that's did not know mom. that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Speed two cruise control, Jason Patrick. Oh, yes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you know him from? Uh, the Rush? Lost Boys. Uh, I yeah, I was like, say, I yeah. was like, Lost the Boys. Lost sure, Boys. Right. Dark? Other, Lost? Right. other than yeah. Lost Boys. No, yeah, that's After it. That's Dark, it. Christ that's Sweet. Speed two. Yeah. Shut up, Colin. Okay. <laughs> Uh, solar babies. That's oh, no, right. No, okay, no, we'll go there. Yeah, solar I remember babies. Was talking about solar babies. I don't want to talk about that anymore. It just sounds bad. Yeah. It is bad. It's yeah. really bad. I don't yeah. ever know. Everybody right, involved in that week, thinks that was babies. a mistake. Um, apparently, uh, behind the scenes anecdote, uh, Linda Miller, the director says that she was a nightmare to work with. He says she's a great actress, nightmare to work with. 
apparently tried to commit suicide in front of everybody in the church, slit her wrists. Shut oh. up. Yeah, and they so in certain scenes she is actually wearing a, a bandage. Shut I was looking for it this up. time and did not notice. Wow. Jesus Christ. So that yep. happened and they were like we're still going to continue to work with you and finish the I movie? I think it was toward the end of the movie. Well, there was yeah, a bunch like, of other things. Use it as motivation. Apparently, there was like... Uh, no, that's, uh, a, that's a call for a 5150. She needs to be involuntarily checked in somewhere. I think yeah. they had to, to shut the down floor. for a period of time mm-hmm. wow. while this was happening. Oh, and then there was also like the camera guys quit. They went through like 16 cinematographers or something crazy like that yeah, in the making of this Jesus. film. Jesus. I mean, it's a low budget movie. You know, mm-hmm. it filmed right. in uh, this, New Jersey. this had a theatrical release? Yes. Yeah, wow. limited window for a, a lower end distributor, okay. and then lived forever on home video. Sure. Where people yeah. actually found it. If it weren't for all of the blood in this movie, I would have thought it to be a TV movie. It does feel like it a TV really movie. does. That vibe, camera really work, kind of like I mean, from a direction mm, standpoint, really. I'm going to disagree with you, but okay. No, I you think it feels, feels like I, a TV. I, I feel like TV it's movie? camera work elevates it above that. I think it's in when we get to the middle and we get to the very um, uh, soap opery stuff. That's mm-hmm. when we feel more television. But it, again, mm-hmm. it doesn't. I never saw it as it looks like it's shot as like something for TV or anything. Yeah, I'm like sorry. No, it always feels. It feels like a film through and through. Yeah, huh. to me. Mm. I don't know that wandering <laughs> middleman. That yeah, seems I like know. we need to fill for time. That's that. That to me is like reminiscent of like. Like Stephen King miniseries, and they're yeah. like, well, we got to stretch it out to three hours, so just keep going. Like, that's yeah. what it felt like. I was like, is any of this really important? Mm-hmm. Not really. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I guess I, we'll have to disagree on that yeah. one. But it grinds to a halt in the middle and turns into <laughs> a drama between people. Yeah, a drama between people, like when movies. I don't want do that it. in my horror movie. <laughs> uh, keep well, it out of my is, horror movie. I guess movies. that's the thing that, like, I'm always complaining about on this show that usually movies are barreling through scenes right. just to, and like, they don't get stop to, to have some. Yeah. Know, some human drama. And they don't like... This one stops for too long, though. Like, you can stop to do that, but you don't need to make it a whole second act of that. It does kind of feel a little halting. Mm -hmm. It does. Because we figure out who it is. It starts really strong. And we stick with her for... For this movie, probably too long. Yeah. I will say that. So you're but. saying, well, okay, should we should we lay out what's happening and then we get to the point yeah, where yeah. you're talking about here? Sure. So the, the audience knows what we're talking about. So the, yeah, so there's this, uh, there's a, a single mother and her two kids mm-hmm. and uh, communion is coming up. And so mm-hmm. little Karen is about to get her communion mm-hmm. and at the communion, she's murdered yeah. by someone in a yellow rain slicker wearing one of these plastic uh, see-through masks. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, Set up before this, we get the idea that uh, Sister Alice is upset, you know, that she's kind of. She's very being, jealous. Yeah. Very, and is very being jealous. overlooked and wants the attention. Mm-hmm. Is there a reason why she can't get communion? I'm not Catholic, she's already so I don't had know. It. Is that what's going on? Because yeah. she's constantly trying to get communion Maybe in the course of this it. movie. Maybe they got like really down to it with the second kid and they decided. The second child, Karen, is going to get it, and they're going through the whole process with it. And maybe Alice never got it. Mm, I know there, how that goes. But yeah, when you're the older kid, you miss out on a lot of shit because they just. I mean, there is that. There is that thing. <laughs> well, okay. I feel Anybody like she never here, got it. You first. said you were you were raised Catholic. Yes, I went to a lot of Catholic masses. Catholic uh, was was what I was. But that would have been in the family. in the eighties. Nineties uh, in the nineties. It would have been in the nineties. Yeah. So I don't know how much you know about Catholicism. This is where I'm asking, because I'm, I'm not sure. I'm wondering if this is implied and we're maybe not picking it up. Okay. In the movie, it is stated that uh, I believe Alice it was conceived out of wedlock, okay. right? And I think this that actually plays a lot into like the, the, the thought process of even you know the antagonist and all this stuff. I believe if Alice was uh, born out of wedlock, everyone, everyone would know about it and she would not get communion. Yes, okay. purposefully. And everyone would know and everyone would say, like, no, she doesn't get communion because she was born out of Didn't wedlock. Didn't they say something almost exactly like that when she tried to go up there? They're like, what is she doing up there? She doesn't belong up there. Yeah, but well, see, say that? Like that. But yeah. if I, yeah. I, when I'm reading that, like, and I don't know anything about Catholicism, maybe it is, did she get it before? No, I would, I would go with the, if she was born out of wedlock, uh, it would be a known thing and she would not get it. She would not be deserving of it. According to if she's done it before, why is she so? Why does she have to do it I don't again? Think she, no, like, I don't why think she's is done it so? Yeah, I think yeah. that is part of the whole um uh, her uh 
her motivation as far as why she is so very jealous of her younger sister um, uh, because she gets all that stuff because of the properness of it. And that's what I really get coming from this movie. And it's just like, you say that and it's just like, that makes perfect sense. She's born out of wedlock. She would not get any of that stuff. She wouldn't be baptized officially. She wouldn't get uh, communion. Uh, Yeah, it makes sense. And then she would be jealous of all the ceremony going on around her sister. And that is her motivation for, you know, antagonizing her sister throughout this movie. Mm. So that makes perfect sense to me. Okay. And I believe I just, it lines I checking up. checking that because, you know. Yeah, I believe that lines up. Okay. So I'm she's murdered, not just murdered, strangled and then set on fire. Yeah. In yeah. the. Uh, Stuffed yeah. in a pew <laughs> and set on fire. Yeah. Yeah. She and then has- we see, like, we see it later, which was it- a shock. You know, it's sure. like you see like a, a crime scene photo. Of yeah. It, you know. But that's like, a, that's an effective setup. Just like, not only does she get killed. Jesus, because we were all that whole first part where she gets killed. We're all Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, yeah we're, uh, we're all having up. an audible reaction to her getting killed and then stuff in a pew and then the candle being lit and put in there with her. And then just that shot of just the smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind it was of just everything out. about like, it. That's, it's a, like, that's good. It's like, first of all, we don't even in horror movies, we don't often see like a child getting murdered. Yeah. You know, and, and especially in such that's, a way just like and strangled. then it's, you know, she's like this pure little girl in the white dress and the veil yeah. and she's getting fucking strangled. Yeah. In, in a church before communion, the whole thing was yeah. like fucking hell. It's like, damn. And then you see the the killer, you know, dragging the body. It's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was just I want to know, disturbing. like, just from a practical point of view, like, uh, what was going on in that church that they allowed this movie to be shot sure. there? <laughs> you know, is it like you, you have like a desanctified church that's closed up be, or something like that? It could have even been like a converted church. Like it was no longer an actual church anymore. It could have been something True. else. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I often wonder about that in scenes, yeah, in movies where they have scenes where it's like, uh, who who saw the script of this and said like this? Yeah. Is that's okay. why I'm like, it's got to be a converted church. There's got to be, it's got to be a building that's used for something else now. Yeah, that's quite possible. I can't see a, ca- a especially a Catholic church being okay yeah, I don't with think it. They would agree to that. No, no, that seems odd. This. Well, the 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 girl's father. So I I guess that they you know they conceived her out of wedlock, but then they got married. They had uh, Karen. Yes, the now the dead one. He returns to town, right, mm-hmm. for the funeral. And so this is kind of the plot mechanics of the thing is like, is, did Alice kill her sister? Mm-hmm. Right. Or did somebody else do it? Because. I mean, yeah, it's very, it's very effective the way they set it up because, I mean, it's clearly, it, it clearly looks like a young female. It's, she's wearing the yellow raincoat that yeah. they wear to the, the school. Like they set it up, so it's like okay, this is clearly an, a little girl that they go to school with, or but I mean, you think it's Alice? I you really, it, yeah, you really do. Time, thought it was Alice. You really Didn't do. You thought it was straight Alice. Mm-hmm. I'm just like this. Yeah, how has this going to go? Because I think it's like definitely her. Yeah, I was all in. Like for the, Alice the way being that the they they instantly they instantly set up the just like the general hatred for her sister. Like because her, Alice is not yeah. a good person she's a she's, mean she's a, little she's thing a mean little yeah she's a, she's a monster like yeah. she's, she'll graduate to what happens in this movie yeah. i feel sociopath <laughs> yeah yeah so i feel her. like they she set shows her no up. emotion really about the she's, death of yeah. her sister she's yeah. kind of upset that even then that the the that the attention is coming away from her that yeah. even in death her sister's taken mm. you know she shows a lot of anger a lot of like narcissistic anger but at no point does she show any other feeling mm-hmm. like yeah. she's just numb to everything else it's yeah. very odd She's also very, she likes to, she definitely pokes at people. Like she likes yeah. that she can just agitate people. Mm-hmm. As Primarily her with, aunt and the landlord. Aunt and the landlord, yeah. yes. There's this, the landlord. I mean, they're oh, both, boy. I mean, they're both fucking horrible people. Bad Everyone people. in the, every goddamn character in this movie is horrible. <laughs> Bad people. No, one not one likable person in this movie. Really, I, I like the dad and I like the mom. Like, you know. I don't really, eh, I wouldn't say I like either one of them. I mean, I don't know. It, the, I didn't mind them i guess more. I mean, the, especially the dad i didn't mind the dad no the dad's fine uh but i don't, I don't know. know the mom i mean the mom's in a situation where she can't win anyway but that's true she's that's but true. she's in a like who wants to believe their child is a murderer i think that's the thing that maybe that's what puts you at nope. odds with her as, right. a, as a viewer yeah. because you're like you know you're going like well no you should be thinking that your daughter's a killer but she is of the mind that like it's that's impossible yeah, yeah. it's impossible that my but my daughter did it yeah. even the cops are like we think maybe your daughter did it. And he's like, no, we're not even going to go there. Yeah. You know, which is, you know, I, okay. Nobody wants to believe they could see. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Um, and the dad, he fulfills the role of, um, he's the, uh, kind of amateur investigator. Yes. 
Uh, these type of movies, because I've heard it described afterwards. I didn't pick up on it while I was watching it the first time, but like uh, uh, reviewers have said, this is the most giallo American movie ever made. And I'm like, yeah, you're kind of, mm. re- it does have like a, a lot of, yeah, even in its, that. yeah. I would say that is, I know who killed me. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Whoa. Well, <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Well, we we stumbled on that. I think we while we were watching, it, it's like, holy we shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's this no, one doesn't no red have red and blue in this movie, right? Well, it's not. But a lot of a lot of uh, standard no jowls don't yeah. do yeah. that kind of stuff. We're, that's specifically the uh, Dario Argento movies, right? Uh, or Mario Bava. But most Giallo movies are kind of. You have. Uh, uh, oh, this is where I was going to go with the father. You have someone who is an alien to the situation, you know, the the area that he's coming to, and then has to try and become an amateur detective and try to solve the mystery because the actual detectives are ineffectual at it. Um, So he comes to town and uh, is trying to actually figure out, like, who killed his daughter, you know? Um, And there's not really a whole list of suspects. The movie is kind of moving you toward Alice yeah. is this disturbed little girl. The, yeah. the, the cops, when they read her school transcripts, I think the cop mm-hmm. goes, this kid's nuts. You yeah. know, after reading yeah. it automatically, he read it yeah. for two seconds. He's like, she's nuts. Mm-hmm. There's a priest who figures in prominently in the movie. Um, Father Tom, Father Tom. And he is looked after by Mrs. Trioni. You got me. I, that, yeah, it's, I yeah. think it's Trioni. Yeah. I'm forgetting definitely her starts with the T and R. Clifton, I think, is the actress who plays yeah. her, if I got that name right. Um, so they, uh, so the girls attend a Catholic school that uh, he teaches St. at. St. Michael's. It is. Yep. So that's Plastered absolutely across right. that slicker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so... What do you say about the the priest? I mean, he's a significant he's, part of this movie. What's his role? He seems to be close to this family, like in a in an unusual kind of way. Like he's maybe maybe they're trying to imply that he's kind of taken on the fatherly. I mean, not just no pun intended, but like the fatherly figure of this family since their father right. has actually stepped out because he gives Brooke Shields a gift. He gives her a cross necklace, and he's like, "Who else would I give it to?" It's very odd. It's the it, in in this in the, the day and age in which this movie is going on, that would I think be a normal thing that would happen. Like a priest would take it upon himself to like, especially if it's a family of his congregation, uh, he would see that hole and then he would try to help out in that way. Because mm-hmm. I don't see like she doesn't seem to have like a romantic interest in no, him. No, not at all. But I wonder if that's like supposed to be implied, but I don't no, no, read no. it that way I at don't all. Think so I've seen enough shit. To know the well, the the position of the priest at that time with the family, it was it was a, a major thing. I mean, they would have them over for dinner every week if they could. Like it was like a contest at that point to have them over and have them, you know, uh, pay special attention to that shit. So if he would see that in a family of his congregation, I think a priest would make an effort to um, intervene mm-hmm. to be part of that and to help out in any way that he could. So this seems normal to me, like of the time, this seems like something the priest would do. Okay. All right. So that makes sense in that regard. Well, he is helping out all the time with the investigation, yeah. all that, trying to give information. You know, he's not blaming Alice, but at the same time, you, you never really get the read on him, like what he actually believes. Right. He's more of kind of like, well, we're, we're going to let, you know, things take their course. Here. Yeah. We're going to, you know, the police will do their investigation and we'll eventually find out. <laughs> You know who did it? Um, suspicion gets cast at some point on the uh, the the I guess it would be Alice's uh, cousin, Angela. Angela, yeah. yes. Uh, only because she goes to the same school, and because at the, at the time of the crime, the, her whereabouts were not accounted for. Right. So they're like, well, we don't know where Alice was, and they're like, well, we don't know where Angela was either. Are you going to blame her too? And it's just, yeah. Uh, they're, right, they're, yeah, they're, the, the yeah, dad is just like you could easily say that about yeah. Angela as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, there's a uh, neighbor, and I say he's the landlord, Alfon- Mr. Alfonso. Mr. Or? Alfonso, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's a character? He's, he's a, a fucking sick character. I uh, uh. tell me all about him, Holly. Well, he's a pedophile, for one. Yep. 
I mean, I, this guy is, he's grossly obese and he's got like a, a pee stain across the front of his pants <laughs> and a None stained wife beater. And, you know, he's squalor. He's, he's, a ton of cats. And he's, he's, ton sharing, of cats. he's sharing a can of cat food with his cats. And like he's eating the cat he's food, eating the which cat was food. the it's most disgusting. disturbing part of this movie. Yeah. He has no eyebrows. He has no eyebrows. He has goatee. Oh he's bald. <laughs> he feels like he should be. He like he. It feels like he walked uh, over from the set of Nothing But Trouble into oh, this movie, God. right? Oh, yeah, because he's got yeah. that like tactile grossness that that movie like, has. I could, Michaela, you know? you're digging your own grave. Like, with stop bring it. it up again. You stop it. You, know, it you can stop it. To bring it. it doesn't mean I'll be here to watch it. Yeah. So. I, I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell Colin. I'm gonna tell Colin. I'm just like I'm gonna announce a different movie. And then next week we're gonna surprise everyone, and Don't I'm bringing you up in trouble. Don't you fucking And that is dare. how I'm going to bring that. Don't movie. You, I will walk out. Don't you? <laughs> that episode's dare. gonna end with all of us getting like involuntarily hospitalized for you like, know, just a mental vomiting. instability, yeah. constant vomiting. <laughs> we're all gonna break down. Probably we have to watch that movie. Like what have what like what have I done to deserve that? Hang <laughs> yeah. on. Like I can't. You keep can't. bringing it keep up. Talking about it. I know. I you didn't bring it up. It go. I didn't bring it up. I'm just saying that's what that guy seemed like. He it, belonged. It, it, he in. is a gross because character. You, yeah. Yes, because I feel like we could basically smell him through the screen. Yeah. That's what I was saying. And then disgusting. we got a nice shot of his back hair. And I was well, and that's done. the thing. It wasn't just like one gross thing, like the no, pee stain. No, no. Every, it was like no. everything was Every, gross. It was it's, it's a gross. Every, yeah, it's gross. Yeah, and he actually like grabs Alice and tries to kiss he her. He does. It's He's all over. It's just not good. Oh God, I can't. There's see. I, I liked his character as, uh, especially the way that the guy played him, and just like watching some of his reactions and stuff. But it's like, uh, oh, he's played. Did very you well. ever see the? Uh, what, were, did we watch the bad seed? Yes, yeah, we did. I, I brought that's, it. That's, that's the handyman. Yeah, right. Was yeah. the handyman? The bad seed. The memories of that came up a lot. Oh yeah, while watching this. I movie. was definitely getting some yes. bad seed. A lot of bad seed stuff came yeah. up. Yeah, he's the one who's like, "I know what you did, Alice." Yeah. You know, yes. it's like the reason yeah. you don't like me is because we we think the same yes. way, and like he keeps on and taunting her. And he's got that her. leering look in that movie too. Yeah, like, yeah, mm. yeah. It's and gross. You yeah. keep <laughs> wondering. At least I did. I'm like, is this guy gonna be the one who like figures it out and gets something that he can hold over her? Or, like, where know, are we going like with this? If, if, at this point, it seems. At this point, it's like he's already figured. It, it feels like the open secret yeah. in that building at that point. Like he knows, the aunt knows. Like yeah, and he's like, I found, I know your shrine in the basement. Like he knows all right. of the weird shit. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Alice has Karen's doll that yeah. she stole right, at the, you know, at the beginning that you know made uh, Karen all upset. This is uh, Alice says that she does know who is. Uh, oh, because the aunt gets attacked. Yeah. In a shock sequence, uh, which I, you know, this is where I was like, I think this movie elevates itself over um, like a, a TV movie, only just in the, the some of those shot scenes leading up to it are like the the sequence is like really effective and cool how they put it together. They said they brought in uh, William Lustig, the director of Maniac. Did he they? did some of the murder scenes in this. Okay. Um, Bill, so maybe he Bill directed Lustig. them. Maybe he directed them. I'm not sure if he just set them up or choreographed. It or, would make you know, sense if he did, because just the it brutality. Fits. Yeah, of the it. brutality fits. Um, but the ant is attacked. She gets stabbed in the in the leg and in the foot and bleeds all over the goddamn place. And you're like, how are we not catching the killer at this point? Yeah, the little girl in the yellow slicker with the creepy looking mask like stabs the ant in the stairwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and runs out the door, and, and everybody that, seems to be seeing that it. Foot stabbing part that. That got me. Like, because she gets her in the points, you're just like, oh, who wants to be stabbed in the foot? Who wants to be stabbed at all? Obviously. I mean, yeah. Nobody. But to be like the foot, just like, <sighs> it looks very painful. It's like very you're painful. stabbed in the palm of your hand while you're trying to guard yourself. And yeah. You know, but that seems like an amateur yeah. move because it's not going to kill him, you know? Like, uh, well, well, she's reaching through. I, I, yeah, I yeah. think that I think it is an amateur move. She's just yes. like stabbing where she can stab. I wonder, you know? in hindsight, if the killer was thinking the ant was the mom. Cause, well, I mean, she, why is she wouldn't know who's target. coming down those stairs. Yeah. She wouldn't know. Because I think the killer wants to kill the mom. She definitely yeah, wants to kill the mom. That's the impression I I get. would say. Yeah. She definitely does. Yeah. But this is what the movie doesn't actually say this, but this is just no. one of those things that you wonder. Well, I mean, in hindsight, well, I mean, yeah, in like, hindsight you can go like, back. Uh, by by the end of the movie, out. we get the idea like, okay, the, the target is really the mom. Yeah. Yeah. We get it. Yeah. Well, the the way that we get there, I guess, is the uh, the once the ant is attacked, then it, and the ant is like Alice tried to kill me. It's Alice. The yeah. cops are. This is what they've wanted to hear the whole time because yeah. they think you know that she's killed her sister. Mm-hmm. Right. 
So they incarcerate Alice, Mm -hmm. put her away. And then she does a lie detector test where she says the killer is Karen. Mm -hmm. Right. Karen has come back from the dead somehow. And so at this point, I don't know how much uh, weight you were giving to this because she does pass a lie detector test. Okay. I was not giving at all. You remember what she Again, I thought it was Mm -hmm. uh, Alice the whole time. Okay. Uh, But the so... She said, so I'm like, okay, she's schizoid, right? There's a multiple personality. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, it makes more Karen, sense. Again, unquote, once we it. get to the ending, it all makes more sense because it then it just seems like a child trying to deal with her sister's death at that yeah. point. And so she's like, Karen is the only thing on her mind because her, yeah. her sister got murdered. Yeah. Whether she's a shitty child or not, that can still be a traumatic thing for her to experience. Even if it isn't guilt. Right. Yeah. If it's, even if it's not guilt, that's still a traumatic thing. And, something she's dealing with so seeing karen like would obviously be her thing so yeah, yeah. it makes well, and, sense and, it, even and she had had that interaction with the landlord where he basically told her like the dead come back for yeah for the revenge kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah so he's put that in her head i think that yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. she only starts thinking about that after, after the fact because exactly. there's a scene where she you know after the the stabbing of the aunt, the dad comes in trying to find the killer and yes. finds yeah. Alice. And she's like, I'm sorry. I saw her. It was Karen. And yeah. you know, it's because right. I took her she doll. She thinks it's Karen. Yeah. yeah. How old do you think uh, the actress Paula Shepard is that played Alice? 15. I was going to say 13. Yeah. Thir- 12, 13. Yeah. She was 19 years old. And then what? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shut up. Okay. What else is she in? Yeah, she's. I, see I don't like, know, but I she like has done other stuff. stuff. She looks Sean's so look familiar. I will look it up. Yeah, she looks so familiar. Yeah, she does. Like yeah. I feel like I've seen her act in yeah. the way she acts in this movie before. Did you ever figure out what that other cop was in? No, I've not seen, the I one looked, that I said looked no, like Lenny Santoni. No, no, but, not that guy. I looked through his filmography and I, I didn't see anything that popped yeah, but out. He looks like a I've, dude. I've that seen him cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, no cop. I've seen him in something. You have Pretty. not seen this girl in anything because she has two total credits. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. She Liquid that. Sky and Alice Sweet Alice. That is it. Wow. She looks so familiar. I still haven't seen That's that weird. movie. That's the trippy alien in New York uh, thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So with Alice incarcerated, mm-hmm. uh, uh, mom and dad have a moment of reconciliation, <laughs> kind of, where this is where you guys are saying it was getting all soap opera Yeah. Yeah, this was the start of the soap opera. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I mean, it can, you get back to the whole relationship with the uh, uh, the exes, the mom yeah. and the dad who has come in. Yeah, mom and dad are consoling each other. They're yes. they're having a moment, oh, and boy. in their moment, they kiss. And it's they're a, it's, they, a very, you know, it's a moment of yeah. vulnerability and weakness. They, and, they, and, and amidst their macking, the uh, <laughs> the phone rings, and oh, it's his new wife. What? <laughs> Whoops! Whoopsies! Yeah. Yeah, so he's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to come home. I love you. Blah, blah. So he should go home at that point. Everybody's <laughs> like, you should go home. What's the point of this scene? Yeah. I don't know. What is the point of this it, scene? It, there's no point. Does it add anything to this movie? No, it doesn't. Nothing. I think it just from, uh, I mean, I. Does I, it have any consequence in the movie at all? No. I don't know. It maybe it gives no, a, a more of a yeah. <laughs> more of a motivation to the father of why he would, why he's putting more effort in. But aside from it being his child. I was like, that's a child. pretty big motivation. Oh, I, know, I know, but he also wants to do it for her. Like, that will be a like motivation. Because he, he still loves her? Yes, that yeah. will be a motivation for him. I, yes, it's his like, child, but he also wants to do it for her. I mean, I see, what they're, I see what they're doing from, like, a plot point. Because I don't. Because this is one of these things that's supposed to, uh, like, you know, you want the relationship to happen, and then I something... Don't care. Horrible no. <laughs> happens. I guess I did. I was like, I want these two people to get back together again. But He's then, already married. I know. No, that doesn't but, matter. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I still wanted to see them somehow, you know, get together. And then the movie goes and, you know, his wife calls. And that's like the precursor to like, you know, then he goes off and gets a phone call. His whole uh, character trajectory is, it like, is interrupted. Yeah, is it like. Point. Yeah, I'm remarried, so we can't be together, but I'm going to do this for you. Is that what they're going for? Like, I'm going to make it up to you by finding the killer? Like, I, mean, I don't I don't still, understand. Uh, there might still be, like, a, a solid relationship there. Like, they got divorced, but they don't hate each other, obviously. Well, clearly, they don't hate each other. So yeah. there's that thing, and there's always... Uh, I mean, but there's I agree with Michaela. There. Like, there's just it no point matter, to it. Though. There's no like, point it to doesn't, it. I think uh, doesn't the only, matter reason, the the only the thing you could do is give motivation for his search for the killer. But, like, okay, even still, it's even if that's... They had to do it. That scene did not need to be that long. It didn't need to go on for 
for that long. That could have been handled over like a phone call you could have given that sort of motivation. And still, it's his daughter. That's yeah. motivation enough. Yeah. We don't but need this. It doesn't this. mean in the complexity of people, that's not the only motivation he has to have. Right. No. But like, but adding that doesn't help the movie at all. Yes. It doesn't make Agreed. a difference. Agreed. So it's just added texture for the sake of for doing no it. no reason. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I agree. And well, I think it's to the movie's detriment because I, it slows it down so much when it had such a strong I mean, start. It, it, because it does occur in that chunk mm. where it becomes a, a you know a soap opera mm-hmm. in that point, maybe it does. Yeah. Well, you're saying it's soap opera because what? What does that mean? Because there's it uh, no, soap opera. We're, we see soap opera because I think there's there's less action in that middle chunk of the movie. Like we get that's well, that, and they do the whole like the, the whole the like they embrace mystery. and then they almost kiss and then they don't and that go, it's a back and forth of that for minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. Minutes. That's a soap opera trope. And I just I, I feel like. I feel like there are other things they could have given us more of, considering its its importance to the story. Like, I feel like we should have had a little more of um, the church life, the people at the church, because that ended up being a pretty pi- a pretty important part of this movie was these characters within the church. Because later on, we find out that one of them in particular has a very important role in all of this. And we don't even really know much about her. It kind of comes out of left field, which I get is kind of the point that they're going for. Mm-hmm, but sure. I feel like it would have been more impactful if we had a little more about them. Right. Because when we get to that point, you should be like, oh. Instead, we're like. What the f- Okay. Okay. Yeah. When I watched it, I wasn't. I didn't experience the same way you guys. I'm curious to see hear how you're. Here, you know how you went through it, but like I, I know I didn't have a, the same experience. It just feels like all right. So spoilers. All right, we're going to talk about like yeah. The, I was like, why don't we just get into that? Yeah. Once, yeah. once we because we were talking during the movie. Once we discussed kind of the motivation of the character, we're just like, okay, that makes sense. But the movie to doesn't me set it up that way. Give it to me yeah. like enough. Like I didn't yeah. get that. It's like oh, that makes sense because yeah. she was. Jilted yeah. Why don't we? At this yeah. Point. Why don't we get, I, I didn't see that her dedication was not being exactly. Um. Uh. You know. Confirmed for. Yeah. Her, just like Why don't we just get guess, to? Well, I was okay. So, and this also goes, I think, to what Michaela was saying about the soap opera uh, scene. Like why it felt unsatisfactory was because it's setting up a romance which has a. It, you know, if if I'm correct, that it's like okay, if you want these people to get together, the way I was watching it then you have to have you you set that up so you engender audience goodwill and then bam somebody gets shockingly murdered yeah but right. the movie does a it, it 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 anticipates that and i think stunts that uh that suspense or whatever mm. by basically having the phone call do that mm. Right, the phone call from the wife kills the the uh possibility of them getting together a scene too early Right, yeah. he's not rushing back home to be with her, and then something happens to him, and then he gets killed. It's like mm. the relationship's already over, and then she's like, "Well, you should go home." And then he's like, "Well, I can't. I have to stay until I find the killer." But that's not that feels like an anticlimax at that point. Okay. Yeah. So he runs off. He gets a phone call. All right. Supposedly so now from, I understand the motivation not being there uh, for his wife, just for his daughter. I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. His daughter's enough because it's yeah. cut off. From yeah, the exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That I, scene ran is pointless. So, I ran upstairs for this moment. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> cut that whole scene out of the movie. Right, it's not so, any right, different. Now yeah. I understand yes. what you're saying. And it also, because it's like he's still in the movie, but his character's usefulness really from a plot perspective has been used up. Yes. Right. Yeah. At this yes. point. It's like once all the phone in like call, one scene, it's used up. Yeah. yeah. So it's like okay, if you're paying attention to the tropes of these kind of movies, it's like well, this guy doesn't really have. So this was about the time that I started going like, well, who the fuck is it? Like who? And I was going down like our list of uh, you know potential suspects, right? And the only person I'm like, well, it's not going to be uh, uh, Abigail. What's her fucking name? The- Angela. 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 Yep. It's not Alice because she's incarcerated. And then I started thinking about Mrs. Uh, Trioni or whatever, because I'm like, she's the only one in my mind that was left. And so I'm like turning this over in my mind as he's running off to go see this spectral figure running around, kind of like in uh, Don't Look Now. Right. You ever seen that movie with Donald Sutherland? Yeah. The one where she's in a red rain mm-hmm. slicker, not a yellow one, but obviously this guy saw what? that movie. Did Trioni come up for at you? This- yeah. She never. 
Never entered my mind. That until, was what I was until thinking she about the, the movie. At this point, Again. why did you think it could it wouldn't be Angela? Oh, uh, Angela never. Yeah, because Angela was like so not in so, the. You know, it's like I I yeah. couldn't figure out what her motivation I, I would be. I agree, but to me, neither was the older lady. Like but, I don't. I feel like they were but both the only like. Thing, but I kept on going back to like the thing that because that's why I, I you know pointed it out this time mm-hmm. because I thought about it. I maybe shouldn't have that the killer takes off of um, uh, Karen the necklace, uh-huh. and it was like, okay, and you know, at the time you're like, okay, what? But and then it, it, looking back, you're like, well, what the fuck? You know, if the killer is just why is she killing these people? And I'm like, is that necklace like a thing? Mm-hmm. And maybe that was what put me onto it. Okay. But it's like, you know, they got this woman who's, I mean, she's not really unstable presented in the movie what is she like she's a, she's presented as kind of a bitch though yeah she looks after the priest the priest is her domain she doesn't yeah. like anybody else coming around and disturbing the father right and so i guess that's why i was at she's that very point pleasant i was thinking i, I, is it, I, I is, must have missed a, a something somewhere in the relationship between her and the priest I'm, i must have missed it because that's that's why I didn't see. I wonder if this coming. is like I another thing that, it. like, again, do you have to be like Catholic in the, the era that this, you know, was going on in order to, to very, see to this? I, I don't know. Yeah, to be very, because she is very, very Catholic. Right, yeah. You know, has grown up in the church or spent so much time in the church that, you know, she's surrounded by mm. the priest and that's all she does as part of her life. She has a confession scene later. She does. Where she's confessing, uh, you know, after, we After find she's out that killed she's, the, yeah. the the dad, yeah, <laughs> and the the shock of like you know oh my god it's you, um, where she just the by the things that he says to her like she completely melts and like you have great faith you know yes, like all yes. this other stuff it's like she believes that she is uh, doing somehow, God's work and yeah yeah by killing that whore because the whore is trying to you know take care step in somehow and uh, have this relationship of closeness with the priest mm-hmm. that right. should be hers. I just mm-hmm. didn't get that beforehand. Yeah. Did I, 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 did I miss something? Did, no, because like, I felt the same way. Yeah, like same. I wasn't picking I, that up at all. Yeah, I yeah felt the like movie, I well, something. the movie I think is trying to give you the shock of like, oh my God, what? It's not Alice. I, I, I appreciate them trying to do that and like it, in some ways they succeeded in that, but they're, it was too random. They didn't piece it together enough. So you were shocked, but you were just like, I wasn't okay, shocked. It like I, it was, I wasn't shocked. I was like, okay, I get the feeling it's not going to be Alice, but it just, I don't know. It I mean, took me a second to remember who that lady was. Yeah. First of all, that yeah, was exactly. Yeah. I was like, wait, was she in the church? Like it took yeah. me a minute. They didn't give me enough. I needed more to piece oh, wow. that together and there for it to make an more impact. Like, should have been more false leads you know yes, what I'm saying? there should have yes. been like it should have been one of those things where it's like a slice of life situation where you see a little bit of each person in the church and you're like so they all have motivation so which one yeah. is it and instead they did the opposite where they're like it's alice it's alice it's alice the whole time yeah. and oh like, just, kidding. just kidding it's this yeah. person we haven't referenced in like that's a while. what i mean this like is they, what i felt that's yeah. what i mean they could have taken that time that they spent with the soap opera stuff and put more in the people in the church because it would have made more of an impact yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, even if they'd gone to like put her in a group of uh, of people who had feelings about what the priest was doing, you know, made her mm-hmm. one of many quote unquote suspects mm-hmm. of right. the priest and like you know many people. Right. In the it would church. have been more of like a who done it. In this yeah. case, it was yeah. it wasn't well, like that at all. And yeah. see, I did read it as a who done it when I saw it, but I was just like, it's either it's not a supernatural thing, so it's not the ghost of Karen. No. It's not. I never you know, felt supernatural. And the only one that they were pointing at that other than Alice that it possibly could have been was um, Angela. Angela. Jesus Christ. It's <laughs> Abigail in my head and I can't get rid of it. Um, you know, and so that's why it's like, is it Angela or like who else can it possibly be? Who has a motive against these people? Mm-hmm. But my issue, I guess, and this is kind of where the movie surprised me because like if it is to me, it was a who done it, right? Mm-hmm. Up until this point, then it's like Okay, now we've revealed who the killer is, and we've still got like another half hour to go. So right. it's like, wh- where are you going to go from that, here I, that, since you just identified who the killer is? That is the quote unquote problem, I think, with this movie. Well, is it a problem? Why is it a problem? Well, that's why I say it's quote unquote. Be, ah, there should be a more final, there should be a quicker resolution with this character, I think, once the reveal is there. Um,. I just think it should be quicker. And like, once you reveal who it is, I, I mean, that may be 
I, I think I'm probably conditioned with movies nowadays. I'm, I'm going to say I'm definitely conditioned. Where once you find out who the killer is, it's oh, pretty, then and the movie's it's, over. It's pretty quick yeah, yeah, that yeah, we yeah. that we find out who it is and then get to a resolution with yeah. that. That is definitely something. This like, is a, it, something we this see is a nowadays. Very different structure from very that, you different, know, and that's the, why yeah. that's I think that is my expectation going into this. Like once you find out who the killer is, mm-hmm. there should be a quicker resolution. I'm so used to that that the fact that we find out who it is and we're just like, oh, okay, and then we linger. On yeah, that. because then you kind of have to go back and like build up like what the motivation is because that's what they are right. doing. They've dropped in the subtle hints, but basically you still don't know why. Right. And then it's like, boom, here's the killer. It's not who you thought it was. Right. Well, who, why the fuck is she doing it? Yeah. Then you kind of have to go back and like layer in who she is. Right. Plus you have the suspense now of like you you have her trying to avoid detection and you have other people wandering into her, uh, you know, yeah. uh, bubble that like now could potentially be uh, victims. Well, this is what um, I was saying earlier when we don't get the uh, when the reveal of the killer comes. Sorry, no, sorry. Um, uh, where, where we don't get the oh moment where it uh, the click into place moment when the killer is revealed because What's, that yeah. that should be key in in. Everything making sense for your yeah. movie, and when we go into and the finale, one, and one thing that threw me off: why did she kill the land? Why did she want to kill the landlord? She didn't, because the the Alice when she gets out of the asylum, because obviously she didn't kill her dad. She was locked up. Yeah, comes home, puts on the slicker and the face mask, goes in and puts cockroaches on him. Yeah, yes, yeah, that was. Then her. she leaves. The killer comes in dressed identically. Because she's like, I'm going to fucking kill that whore. So she wanders up the stairs and banging on the door. I thought she was banging on the landlord's door. No, she's banging on the... Because she was going to stab uh, Linda Miller as soon as she opened the goddamn door at that point. Hmm. And then when she didn't answer, or I think she was still up there, when the cockroaches like spilled off of him, he freaked he out. Freaks out runs he everywhere. comes out yeah, the door yeah, yeah. and she's like, oh shit, I got to get out of here. Oh, and then yeah. he okay. grabs her and is yeah. like, Alice, get back here. And it's not Alice. Okay. He, she stabs yeah. him. Okay. I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. So then the big climax in the movie takes place at the, the church where Alice is trying to get her, conf- her communion again. And Mrs. Triani like comes in there to, I guess, kill the mom again, like at the, at, you know, she's like, okay, I've given up. Yeah. I'm actually going to do it like right here in front of God and everybody. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, the priest is, you know, cause the cops know who she is at this point. They're trying to get her out of the church and she fucking ganks that priest in the neck. Yeah. Why do the cops know who she is? He saw her in the hallway. In the he hallway, yeah, because right. yeah. they were yeah. scoping out the right, apartment. Right, right, right. Yeah, he does. He, yeah, he, like you said, ganks him in the neck. Yeah, yeah. is that yeah. what you do? You gank someone with a is, fucking butcher he got, knife? He got ganked. <laughs> we yeah. will say that. Like that is whatever that means no, in this that movie. Is, that is the technical. He term. got ganked. Yeah, he's yeah. ganked. Yeah. Ganked in the throat. Yeah, ganked mm-hmm. in the throat. That's the only way you can get it in the throat is to be ganked. Yeah, I can't give you communion today. But you give it to that whore. I gank. Give you communion today. Is that what I said? No, yeah. I'm just being dumb. <laughs> well, Alice at the end of the movie is revealed to be the little psychopath that we always thought that she was. I mean, she's the she's she will continue on. It feels like, yeah, and be because she's not again. Like we said, she's not a good person. <laughs> yeah. Despite not being the killer, I feel like she's and, not a good. And person. now she and now it's just mother and daughter. So this continues to be the bad seed. Yeah, sure, yeah. like yeah. this will go on to be the bad seed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, there's probably more like uh, the stuff that she seems to be eh, not like uh, turned on by it, but not turned off by it. All the death that is going on around yeah. her, you know, she reacts. Or according like, according to the cop, she is a, a child that gets turned on by this kind of thing. That moment with the lie detector. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, because he says something to the Jesus. He, yes, that fucking dude. That was disgusting. Well, he, his, uh, yeah, that's why I'm wondering. If I was wrapping the quarter, because in a lie detector, you have to wrap a quarter around their waist and everything. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I was wrapping the quarter around her. She looked like she wanted me to feel her the fucking up. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But that's pointing back to her character. I don't think the movie pulled it off well, but what it's no, trying to do is like They're that she to... likes to poke at people and right. fuck with them. They're setting but her character it up. It doesn't that read moment, that it's that way. Like, no, it, it doesn't play off at all. Yeah, not to a Not at daughter. all. I was just like, okay, maybe she's just a child who's slightly afraid because she's taking a lie detector test. But sure, read it that way, you sicko. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Fuck that. Yeah. But at the end, she takes the murder weapon all bloodied and is like going to take it home as a souvenir. Yeah. So, so she's not right. No. Probably Which, going back to where's, the basement where's the, where she puts uh, all her 
uh, Alice Sweet Alice sequel. There's going to be a remake, apparently, a filmmaker named Dante Tomaselli, yeah. who is like the nephew or something of the director, has been talking about making a, a, a remake for years, and who knows if they're actually going to get around uh, to that. If they haven't made it now, then... No. He makes movies with, like, Felissa Rose and stuff like that. Oh, does he? Yeah. Uh, Felicia Rose, yeah. Uh, it was Satan's Playground. Okay. No? No. Never seen it. something I, called I, horror? I have not seen no? Felicia Rose in anything but... But the sleepaway sleep camp. Sleepaway camp, yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other behind the scenes trivia. We covered all the folks who are in it. I think so. And uh yeah, it didn't do well at the box office, but has garnered a cult class or cult. Obviously it's been giving great care by Aero Video, so but uh I yep. think that's it. I think uh I think it's that's Alice, 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 yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, listeners, what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna review the movie. We're gonna go around the table. You're gonna find out what we individually thought of the movie and whether we'd recommend that you see it. Uh, but first, we're gonna answer some of your mail, and to do that, we're gonna summon our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail, masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Let's get the little yellow rain slicker on today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was raining out earlier, so you know that makes sense. He's, yeah. Then why is he dripping? Just a happy coincidence. <laughs> uh, he's always dripping. It rains a lot in this movie. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It does. I thought but about you the can guys tell with the poles. You can tell it's rain, rain, towers rain towers and just the way it spreads across mm-hmm. the shots. I'm just like, that's a rain tower. Mm. That's not natural. Well, uh, you can get a hold of us. Listener, we hope that you do. Join the Freak Show family by getting a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if you, or, you know, hey, if you write a review, we'll hey, read that too. Yeah, yeah go yeah, to yeah. iTunes, yeah. make a review. Yeah. That's right. Scott. YouTube. Go we will that, read anything, no. good or bad. Mm, I don't know if I want to invite YouTube comments. No, yeah, we read no. those too. No, no, I put those in there. Yeah, but YouTube's a bad. Place. It is it's weird. A bad corner. Yeah. No, that. YouTube's weird. Yeah, yeah. So YouTube yeah. is not like that's, the rest of uh, yeah the that's, social. That's a, yeah, that's, that's why a, I said a, I wouldn't encourage. YouTube it. is a back alley of the internet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just so saying you, you should you should listen to us on YouTube. <laughs> That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, saying. And you can comment That's there. We will yeah, we like eventually money. get around to reading those too. <laughs> Skylar Sig listened to us on iTunes and said, I found this podcast through my guilty horror pleasure, Waxwork. Uh-oh. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. That was a fun That episode. was a fun it one. Was I liked that one. Good. We it's like, a good we movie. We like portals and shit. Yeah. yeah which happened in that movie. And it was, it was a, a secret anthology <laughs> movie. I know. <laughs> it was so fun. It was fun. I liked that one. Well, Skylar says uh, from that episode i have been on a binging spree i love the way you guys go from the obscure to the mainstream and everything in between i definitely mm-hmm. want you guys <laughs> to do the wax work sequel lost in time because it's so much different than the original and it's worth a watch for the bruce campbell scene alone i can't uh-huh. recommend you guys enough to everyone i know you guys are all great in your own way but my favorite is holly <gasps> we have similar oh, tastes oh. Oh my god! We have similar tastes in movies, and I love her laugh. You guys, I so needed that today. Thank you. (laughs) You you know what? She did need it. I really did. I had the worst week. Oh my god! I'm I'm down to watch the sequel. Like I'm down Uh, to watch the Wax uh, Works sequel. (laughs) I'm I'm telling you, I want to watch a sequel. Are you listening? No, you tell me you don't want to watch a sequel. (laughs) That's the one I'll bring. You listen to it. You listen. I will listen. Uh, Travis Legler writes in uh, and s- introduces us to a new Saturday Night Freak Show fan. He says his son Keaton, named after Michael Keaton, was born on uh, Monday. I love it. And now my firstborn Remy, which is named after X Men's Gambit, and our it. puppy nice. Gracie Bear, <laughs> enjoy playing on the floor and running errands while listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show. We've played the Giver, Maximum Overdrive, Jaws 3D, and Halloween 2018. Amazing. Uh, while Very Keaton nice. naps on my chest and Remy naps on my side and Gracie is at my feet, I think how lucky I am and enjoy some freak time. It's hard to keep them asleep next to me with some of Colin Zingers, but thank you <laughs> for the relaxing time. Uh, that's congratulations. That's a good family, a good family yeah, right that's there. Amazing. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. That's good people. That, man, that's a lot of yelling to expose a baby to with that Halloween that's 2018 yeah, is a we, lot yeah. of... <laughs> <laughs> we were worked up I for that one. I hope I didn't yeah. wake anybody up in that one. And that's a long episode, too, right? It that's like, it's a really so. long one. It was a long yeah. one, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And they weren't good ones. Well, but that was also like... Spoiler. That was like a whole... 
like what decades worth of thoughts because we hadn't sure. had a movie. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know. No, so. it was it, that was like a confessional time for it, you guys. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it was therapy. It, it was, was a therapy was, session. Yeah. It usually is. Mm-hmm. Well, about Alice, sweet Alice, B-Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, I caught this with the Saturday Cinema crew a few months back. Really felt like some scriptwriter was working through a lot of personal issues. You may feel the need yeah. to scrape off the film afterwards. In short, it's the 70s, <laughs> folks. Ni- hashtag nihilism the decade. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to sum it up. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that. That's spectacular. Yeah, I hope that decade. that gets like a hashtag that gets trending. Right? Hashtag nihilism right? right. 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 the decade. That's good. That's well, great. Punk Boss Sloan 69 writes in and says, it's a creepy pro slasher. B plus. B team. B team. Uh, Feather Pluckin says it's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What? Who are you? How did you get here? I need a complete well, welcome. history yeah. of why you're listening to us. Please, please we hope tell we me you're a chicken your farmer. Life. More please tell me you're a chicken farmer. Feather Pluckin. <laughs> Watch out for those spider hills and those oh farms. Yeah. Well, Feather Pluckin says, uh, Alice, <laughs> <laughs> says Alice, sweet Alice, is one of the most underrated horror movies ever made. Amazing atmosphere and mood, and also one of the best masks in slasher movie history. Uh, Tanya Taylor writes in and says, Alice, sweet Alice is interesting. Brooke Shields is a small child. She is a child. Mm-hmm. You're Evil right. Evil kids are the creepiest. Yes. Another favorite. Always. All right. Love your podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Renee Fierce says, I like this crazy movie back in the day. Yeah. Cool. Sure. I said, you don't like it now. She said, I can't find it now. Ah, uh, well, well, guess era what? Video. Era video. You're in luck. There it is. Yeah. It's there. It exists. Uh, about vacancy, uh, Neil Gums writes in and says, Oh, wow, I just watched uh, Career Opportunities and wondered what else Frank Whaley had done. And then I moved on with my life. <laughs> As you should. Probably. As you should. I mean, Frank Whaley's done an uh, actual ton of <laughs> shit, but, you know, that's fine if you move on. That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure you don't need to dedicate your life to figuring out what no. he's been up to. It's no, fine to move true. on. Yeah, we feel good. that a lo- about a lot of movies we watch on here. We're like, yeah. all right, let's just move I on with life. Brent Zemecki writes in and says the only thing he ever found on a unlabeled VHS tape was a TV recording of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade that opens with a Pepsi ad using a classic indie traps and a man desperate for a can of Pepsi. Mm-hmm. The best Indiana Jones movie. Bravo. Get the <laughs> Bravo. I know you're a Raiders bold but... statements to get Last Predators series. is the best Predator movie. You know, oh, I said it was the, uh, it was the best sequel. Bro, okay, best, best sequel. sequel. That's true. All right, not the best right. movie. Still wrong, La- but okay. Last Crusade. Oh no, my favorite. Last Crusade. Last Crusade is, Last Last Crusade Crusade. is my favorite. Come on, Last yeah. Crusade. Sorry, it is. Great well, at least you didn't say Temple great. of Doom. Now I no, love no, Temple no, no, of Doom, no, no, but that no. movie I like Temple has of Doom problems. too. I yeah. like those yeah. three movies. I, I like those three they're movies. Great. They're great. They're great. Last Crusade's my favorite. Last Crusade. All right, wrong. And we're on to the wrap ups, <laughs> which we are going to start is. with Michaela. Hey, Michaela. Hey. 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 Hi. Hey. How you doing? Uh, what did you think about tonight's movie, Alice? Sweet Alice. Uh, there's a there's a lot of things I do like about this movie. I had seen it before, but it had been about. 10 years since I've seen it. It does have a good like mask and like get up design as a yeah. good look. Um, it, it is shot well. It, it it has good things going for it. It starts really strong. It does things I've never really seen before like killing a girl at her first communion yeah. and then setting, yeah. setting well, the pew on fire in a church. That's yeah, new. It's fucked yeah, up. I've seen that. that first, that's some good stuff. Yeah. That first. Um, I only wish it would sustain that momentum throughout the movie. Yeah. I feel like I, I remember enjoying it the first time I had seen it but I remember it it's still like when you see clips of this movie out of context, it seems darker than it actually is when yeah. you watch them in context. Yeah. Um, so that's a little disappointing. It, and like I said, that slow down in the middle when it turns into a soap opera, it just really takes the points down on this movie for me quite a bit. Um, I found that part a little bit of a struggle to get through and a struggle to like, like, it just seemed like I know that this is going to have a reveal of this is the killer. So can we just get to it? You know, yeah, that's kind of how yeah. I was well, feeling. You did remember that though. Going yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but I was just like, I know that there's a reveal. I couldn't remember exactly who it was, but I remember being like, I know there's a reveal. And so why are we, can we, can we stop spinning the wheels and just mm. start moving? Yeah. Um. So I think, unfortunately, I don't think I can re- recommend it just because that middle chunk is, really pointless and really hard to get through for me the first half is awesome 
The end is pretty great. It has great kills. Some of the, the way the kills are shot are interesting, too. The dude it, being tied up and just thrown off of the That was great. Oh, yeah, fine. we actually, yeah. we were talking about when we were watching yeah. this, like, I, I've never really thought about the fact before that, like, if you're tied up and, like, bound and you can't move and you get thrown off something yeah. or you right. fall, you can't break, brace that's, your own that's, fall. That's, that's, that's fucking a, horrifying. Right. That's a good kill. Yeah. When you're putting yourself in a situation and it fucking horrifies you. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. And, like, I think it's interesting, too, because I think a lot of times when you have a... Uh, um, a child actor in a movie, especially in a horror movie, I think a lot of people like take the easy way out and shoot everything from like a kid's perspective. Right. And I like that they didn't do that in this movie. Like there were some strange angles used, especially with like stairways and things like that that I thought yeah. were interesting. It just seems like it's a really cheap thing to do. Be like, oh, the camera's low to the ground because it's a kid, you know, and they didn't do that in this movie. So I think that that's, that's good. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they thought about it. So that's good. But I just, there's not enough on the front and the back to make the middle worth it, if that makes sense. So I don't mm-hmm. think I can recommend it. Holly? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. Like, I needed more... I They they wanted to do the whodunit, and I needed more of that. I needed them to... to I needed them to get to the, the misdirect quicker. Um, I think they... I feel like they, they hung on Alice too much, so it, it didn't... It didn't make the reveal strong enough because, like I said earlier, like, we didn't get enough time with the actual killer for it to really make an impact on me. I was just like, okay, she's the killer, I guess. I I, I guess I know why, but it just it didn't have enough impact on me. Like, I didn't think... I wasn't really shocked beyond beyond the, co- the kill at the communion scene. I wasn't really shocked by anything. I, I, wanted, I wanted more suspense. I wanted more... I don't know. It just... It just didn't do what I think it was trying to do. I don't know. I, I I agree though. I think the I think the middle just really kind of drugged the movie down. There was some really great stuff at the beginning, great stuff at the end. I I liked the kills. I you know I, it was bloodier than I thought it was going to be because I mean I know we disagreed on it, but like I said, to me it did have a TV movie feeling. So the fact that it was as bloody as it was, like it boosted it up for me a little bit. Um, but it. I, Ultimately, it didn't have the effect on me that I think it was trying. So I don't think I can recommend it because it just didn't quite work in the way that I think it was supposed to. But, you know, Scary Mask, decent kills. And there was some good stuff in it, but it didn't quite pull it off for me. So I can't recommend. Sean. Uh, yeah. I mean, this movie's got some good things going for it. Like we've all said, it's like it's a good mask, um, good kills. Um, but. Uh, I was so thoroughly convinced that it was just Allison in this movie that the reveal threw me off, I think, a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we weren't, I I don't think the movie. um, I mean, it's even in the title, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, mean, communion or, uh, communion would have been maybe the better. Holy Terror, was that the other one? Holy Terror Terror is the best one. Yeah, Yeah, Holy Terror would have been good. I think communion may have been the better title for the I'm end, never going to watch the, a movie called Communion. Right, I see right, that right. on a shelf. No. I'm not picking no. that up. I just watched that the other week too, yeah. the Christopher Walken one. Oh, really? <laughs> um, I think it may have been better for this movie considering how it ends up um, because I was so thoroughly convinced it was Alice that um, where we ended up. You were disappointed that it wasn't? Um, I was disappointed that I didn't have uh, backup for the conclusion of this movie. Yeah. Like it didn't. Like it didn't fully click with me once we got to her yeah. because again we had to the discuss the misdirect was too strong too strong well I think the direct <laughs> yeah the direct, really, the misdirect, really well, yeah. it felt like the direct was too strong yeah, just really. like it, it feels like Alice 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 like it, it felt like this movie was pointing hard at Alice yeah. and then I wasn't given enough to question that um, and I think that's what needs to happen for this movie. Yep. You need to question it a little bit so that when it does end up being someone else you're just like oh okay that it, it makes sense. And yeah. it didn't like, you know, again, after the discussion, I'm just like, mm-hmm. all right, I understand the motivation for that. Um, but it took the discussion to get there. And then again, in the middle where we're not, you know, uh, a lot can be said for, or, well, I mean, uh, enough has been said about the like, Hey, it's been 10 pages. We need to kill a uh, film, mm-hmm. the version of filmmaking mm-hmm. that is done yeah, nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we could have used, st- a little, um, you know, that doesn't make a good movie. But we could have maybe used a little more in the middle of this movie because it does become a little dramatic in the middle Mm -hmm. of the movie. Um, In a movie that I thought was when we started out with the kills that we got and the bloodiness, I thought would continue on through the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, So it doesn't 
Oh, it's close. Colin, it's close, but it doesn't quite get there. Like it just it, there's a misstep. And um, for that, I can't quite recommend Alice, Sweet Alice. Again, it's close, but doesn't no quite cigar. Make, yeah, no cigar. <laughs> close, no cigar. Doesn't quite make the recommendation. So there it is. Colin. All right. Well, I'm I'm totally going to recommend this movie. I mean, obviously, I of bought course, it. But, of course. Um, yeah, when I saw it, <clears throat> just, you know, like I said, recently, I had the feeling that I was like, oh, my God, where's this movie been all my life? It was one of those experiences where I sat there going like, this movie is like a fucking classic of the genre. And like, nobody really seems to talk about it. The uh, the direction is like so assured that I'm like, what the fuck else has this guy done? And apparently he faded off into obscurity, Alfred uh, he Soleil. He faded into a bl- uh, Bolivian, as he, Mike Tyson would say. Okay, so he got his start. Got <laughs> this is, I think, part of his problem. He started out going like, okay, I'm going to get into movies. Francis Ford Coppola made The Godfather. And before he made The Godfather, well, he made a movie called Dementia 13 for Roger Corman. But before that, and most people don't remember this or know about it, but Francis Ford Coppola made what's called a nudie movie called uh, Tonight for Sure. And, (laughs) uh, you know, so Alfred Soleil says, I want to get into movies. Seriously, for sure? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Alfred Soleil says, well, that's how you get into movies. You make porno. In the 1970s, porno was trying to be legitimate. So everyone, he made a movie yeah, called, there, yeah. I think it was called Deep Sleep or something like this. He made his first movie. He's like, yeah, we made this, made a porno, like legit sure. porno. The movie gets brought up on obscenity charges. Oh, right. It made, it made money, but it, be, yeah, this was, you know, it was an example of yeah. like, this is what is obscene. And he had to go to court and all this other stuff. All prints in the movie were confiscated. He was excommunicated from the Catholic Church. All right. I think Alice, sweet Alice, in some way, is his response, response to that. Yeah. Uh, to that. Obviously, he's a Catholic guy. He's, you know, I didn't actually, a uh, third watch. This is the time that I figured out, like, oh, this doesn't take place in 1976. It takes right. Place yeah. We, yeah. In 1971 or 61. Um, 76. Yeah. There's, but <laughs> watching it, it, you know, after seeing it, so like I said, I watched it now three times probably within right. the last month. This is probably the last time for a while now. Uh, but watching it, I'm like, Man, he's doing these camera moves and camera shots, you know, uh, I mean, I yeah, that are elevated, I think, beyond uh, like the TV movie uh, uh, kind of coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like he's actually like this is this guy is a director. And then to find out that he basically ended up like working on Castle as like a production designer or something. He did. I mean, he's got a ton of credits. He's still working in the business. Wow. But, uh, you know, nothing. I think he made a movie. It was originally called Thursday the 12th. It was a slasher movie. It came out (laughs) as. Of course. We have to have 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 the before. Of course. It came out. It's called Pandemonium. And then he made something else after that. I don't know. None of them uh, did anything. Um I thought Linda Miller was great in in this movie, uh, and, and I haven't seen her in anything else. I think maybe she was in um, uh, what's that fucking last? Uh, oh Jesus, the Sybil Shepherd Jeff Bridges movie from like the seventies that like everybody. Oh God, I'm totally blanking on this. It'll come back to me. Yeah, uh, I think she was in that, and you know, and then went on to this, and then uh, faded off into obscurity. Um, what was her name? The uh, I said like Maitland O'Connell. What was the the lady who played uh, Mrs. Trion? Oh, Mildred something. Mildred, something? yeah, yeah. She's great. Like watching it this time, I'm like, what she's doing is like I totally believe that actress is nuts. Yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, she plays it with this absolute total conviction. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I liked the structure of the movie because it did something that I was not prepared for Mm -hmm. you know that it kind of did i think the guy and now watching it you know there's a scene where uh the priests walk by like a pretty blatant poster of psycho yeah very blatant it was a dead body and a picture of psycho it's it's literally like framed in the center of the shot (laughs) Uh i'm like this guy is trying to do alfred hitchcock that's what that's where his yeah uh, he is you know because I guess he said, you know, he hadn't seen any of the Italian uh, uh, Jalo films. Yeah, okay. So that they weren't his inspiration. He's going, they, those are inspired by Hitchcock. He's inspired by Hitchcock. He's trying to make this kind of thriller. Yeah, okay. And they're all uh, in the same school. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think you should definitely check this out. I think, 
you know, I mean, I guess, you know, I bring it to the freak show basically to see like how uh, an audience reacts to it. Yes. yes and I suppose based on the way that you guys took it, which was very different. And again, I had other people over here watching and they saw it my way. So that's why I'm like, okay, you know, it's like, you know, maybe this doesn't play or, you know, uh, I'm not sure it, uh, as far as like the slowdown in the middle that you're talking about, cause I was involved in it the whole way through this time it was slower, but again, third time through and you know sure. where it's heading. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess I, I said I, I'm still going to recommend it. I think it's uh, it, not like an example of the slasher genre, and I don't think it is a slasher. It's a thriller. And like uh, I said, it probably is closer to like a giallo than it is, um, you know, a, a slasher in that regard. But it was still, as far as a horror movie goes, I was uh, thrilled to find out about and to experience Alice Sweet Alice after hearing about it all these years. So uh, you got to check it out. Alice Sweet Alice. There you go. Boom. There you uh, go. Last Picture Show? Is that what That's it. That's Thank it. you very much. Oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Last, last Picture something, Show. Something, yeah. Last Tango and Pamela. Like, That's no, not it. Show, like, what yeah. the I was like, no, Last Boy it. Scout, Last Tango. <laughs> last like, Boy Scout. Yeah. <laughs> last Picture Show. We're going all over. I think she's in that. So, um, yeah. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Oh, it's a field trip. Yeah. It's a very special episode. <laughs> That's right. It is. We're going to go spend oh, money. it's going to be special. And we're going to go to, <laughs> we're going to talk about something we've already talked about before, but from a whole new angle. And that's, we're going to go see. It chapter two. Boom. The big horror movie <laughs> event of the year. We have to. We have, we have to. to. We, we have, have to do it. You because gotta, we did the Colin. first one. You gotta. One. All right. So there, there will be no <laughs> sidelines with the uh, TV miniseries. No, of the, fuck that. We're fuck, not doing no, that this that time. Is hey, you remember we did that last we time. Did. We fuck actually it. No, it was, it was supposed to be a, about the first half of the TV it was series. Bad. No, we're just and then we're just like watch. fuck it. We're or no, we're talking yeah, about just it. Just watching it. it chapter two. Okay, it chapter two. I can't two. look at that ponytail anymore, man. No. I can't it's, watch look at that ponytail. I stutter. I'm like, come on, can't do it. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this movie. Sean's already seen it. So I have seen it and I can't wait to talk about it. All right. Well, there you go. You take that for what it's worth. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, it chapter two. And until then, we're going to pay some bills. We're going to shut everything down and the basement is going dark.